Hi everybody. Today I wanted to show you how to create a stamp self-portrait using a free online program called photop.com. It's very similar to Photoshop if you've heard of Photoshop. And we are going to use this as artists to help us help us with our printmaking project. We learned about Kehinde Wiley who uses the computer to view different backgrounds before he does his paintings. Artists use the computer for so many different things. They create photos, they create references. Some artists create their finished artwork on the computer, but many artists use it as a tool as part of a process and a hands-on approach. So to help you out, you gotta figure out which way you learn best. Some of us learn best by doing step-by-step -step reading. So I do have all the steps on Google Classroom for you. I will also print this out so you can look at it while you are working, but I wanted to make this video in case it's easier for you to create a video and watch the video. Feel free to pause as much as you need to. This is awkward if you've never done it before, so give yourself a little bit of patience and some grace. So here we go. On our Chromebook, we're gonna go to a website called photop.com or photopia.com and hit enter. And you can make a new project. Um, I often do that when I'm free drawing, but today we're gonna do something different. We're going to use a photograph of ourselves. So along the top, in this dark gray toolbar, you'll see a lot of familiar options. You go to File, Open More, Take a Picture. And all of a sudden, hello, you're going to be on your computer. Ooh, and you're gonna take a selfie of yourself. But don't just do it anywhere. Make sure you're intentional. You might want a very plain background. So stand against a wall or I'm standing against my window covering. Or if you want a cool pattern background, just be really intentional. Like maybe you use some kind of a cool art background, an art poster, maybe you have a friend help you. But play around and think about your background because it's going to be part of your printmaking. I'm just going to go very plain for this. It doesn't have to be the world's best picture. So please, please, please go easy on yourself. We're gonna change it. You can be serious or you can smile. And when you're ready, you click the gray, take a picture. And it says a new project was created, but I still see myself on the screen. So before you panic, there's a little X, X out the window. And there you are on the screen. Nice. Now we have to create an image that's the same size as our printing block. And to do that, we're gonna have to crop it. So now that I have an image in there, you'll notice all these tools popped up on the left. So we're gonna start first with the rectangle select. It's the second one down for me. You're gonna click it and oh my gosh, wait a minute. Things are changing on this top toolbar here. These are all the different variations of each tool. So instead of a free edge, for refine edge. We're gonna drop that menu down and do a fixed ratio. So I'm going to do a ratio of two for the width, that's W, and three for the height. And now when I do my rectangle select, it's going to give me a rectangle that is the same ratio as my printing block. So I usually start in the upper left-hand corner and I drag, I'm pressing on my keypad and I drag a rectangle. And when I let go of my keypad, it changes to a move tool. You can move it all around. If you don't like it, control and D at the same time, make it go away. And you can redraw your rectangle. And once you, you think it's big enough, you let go and you can move it around. Now we are going to crop this down a little bit. So next to file, there's still all those same tools that we saw in the beginning. I'm gonna go to image and a little past halfway, go to crop. Off you go. Remember I told you control and D, get the dotted line away. If it bugs you, get that dotted line away. And now we just wanna make sure it's four inches wide by six inches tall. So we're gonna go back to image at the top and we're gonna to go to image size. And this box pops up. I have a copy of it on your handout, but first thing I always do is change it from pixels on the right hand side to inches. And the width we're going for is four inches. And again, it's on your printout. And the height is six inches. And DPI is how detailed it's going to be, dots per inch. So if it's online, you could leave it at 72. I'm gonna change it to 200 since I'm printing it out. And I hit okay. 
feel free to pause it at any point and look at your handout. Next, we're going to create a stamp filter. Filters are super fun. They're fun to play with. So if you have extra time, you'll definitely want to play with it. So up at the top, we've been playing with file, image. Now we're going to go to filter, filter gallery, and you're going to see a ton of cool filters. They do take a while to load. They're very big. So be patient when you're in your filter gallery. I'm scrolling way down under sketch and I want to go to stamp filter. Click on the stamp. And oh my gosh, look at me, I'm inverted in black and white. Now over here on the right, there's some options. I tend to leave my dark light balance at 25, but I tend to change my smoothness to somewhere between 10 and 15. And it takes a while to kick in, so you have to be patient. Um, maybe I'll go a little less, a little more. You can play with it, just be really patient. We are going to be carving these self-portraits, so that's why I didn't want as much detail as the first one, because they are going to be carved. I'll show you another one I did. I had that version. I had that version a little bit more detailed, but you don't want too many details. And I'm going to hit OK once I decide I like it. And be patient. It takes a minute. Sometimes it takes longer than others. And sometimes you get this, you get a weird black and white inverted image. <gasps> oh my gosh, my teeth are black, that's weird. No worries, we're gonna play around with this image. So image, we can make all sorts of adjustments. So the second one down, there's more tools within tools. So you can go to adjustment and you can go to invert. Oh, now I'm green. Now play around a little bit more. You can go to image adjustments. Oh, brightness and contrast. Okay, we can go more bright. Oh, no, that's not working. Let's play around some more. So maybe go to image adjustments. And I can go to oh, black and white. Let's try that. Okay. Oh, I'm kind of gray and white. So let's go to image adjustments. And brightness contrast. Now let's try that and make it high, high, high contrast. Oh, and low brightness. Okay, there we go. That's more black and white, so I can really see it. There we go. So play around with that. That's all on your handout, but basically I'm playing around in the image bar, mostly with image adjustments to get it to a nice black and white stamp. Now we need to take a screenshot. And on a Chromebook, to take a screenshot, you have to hold three keys, Control, Shift, and above the six key, do you see that little rectangle with two lines on the right? Those are the three keys you're gonna hold. Control, shift, above the six key, boop. And it says drag to select an area to capture. You wanna really try to get the entire thing. And I'm gonna drag it, it's really hard because I'm pressing and dragging at the same time. I look like I'm walking on my trackpad. Get the whole thing, and when you release, you have to also click capture. And sometimes it makes a cute little camera sound. Now, basically what that does is it has copied it for you. And then you can go ahead and I will create a doc for you or I will create probably a slide for you. Um, if you don't have one created, you just open up your own doc and you control V or hit paste and you paste it in there and I will print it out for you. But that's basically how we're going to use the stamp filter to create self-portrait stamps. Um, you cannot save your work really in Photopea because what happens on the school Chromebooks is, did you know that anytime they die or you, uh, like if the battery goes dead or if you close them down, all of your saved work is erased. So that's why I copy and paste it. Um, there are workarounds for this. I don't want you to log in with your Google password. Um, but I don't even save it to my Chromebook. I just take a screenshot of my work for this purpose. But for other projects, I can show you how we can save it as a website or something else without logging in. So that's my tutorial for today. I hope this helps you play around. The more you just play with different filters, with different tools, with the different toolbars and options, the easier and more familiar it becomes. But the first few times you use Photoshop or Photop, it is very overwhelming. So be patient with yourself. Great job, everybody. Have fun.